Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show a quick walkthrough of the typical flow that you would probably have at your detailing business um, to show you how to, you know, add a customer and then add an appointment to a customer, invoice, mark the payment, so on and so forth. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can do this, and that's one of the benefits of Orbisex is that there is no fixed, rigid workflow. It can, you know, work however you want it because at the end of the day, it's your data and your shop is going to be dynamic. Your business is going to be dynamic where uh, sometimes, for example, you might have to book an appointment, but it doesn't ever get tied to an invoice or you might make an invoice that never gets tied to an appointment. And so you need to have that ability to do that uh, because you might have a customer that you know, they came in for some work uh, or you went to their place, did some work. And then, you know, for whatever reason, you had to fix something. That's where you can make an appointment without having to tie it to an invoice or so on and so forth. You can still take advantage of all the other benefits like marking it completed, getting feedback and so on and so forth. And then similarly, you might have the opposite where you, you know, have to put in an invoice, but it doesn't get attached to a job. Maybe someone came in and they wanted to buy a bottle of tire shine or something. So you can create an invoice without a customer uh appointment attached to it so on and so forth so what we do at our shop is we do put everybody in as leads uh so i'll click on view leads we always start with leads because that's where you're going to want to you know keep your prospects they're not customers yet you want to nurture those relationships they haven't become a customer yet so you can create a lead uh within the system you can put in their details so i'll just put you know test lead and then i'll just give a random phone number here all right and then you can do the same for email. So test lead at mail.com. Just put in some, some nonsense here. <laughs> and then this is where we, we usually put in like, what, what did they call for? What did they email for? Or go on live chat, whatever it was. We can say, okay, they're interested in ceramic coating. Uh, we spoke to them about one of the packages and it was, you know, $890. And, you know, where did they come from? And we'll say live chat. So we'll put live chat in this case, you know, and uh, for vehicle, we'll say they've got a 2021. Mercedes and we'll say they've got the S class all right you can put in some notes like spoke about two year ceramic coating we'll just say something like that right the lead status defaults to a hot lead because we just talked to them right there are other states and this is where um, if you want to convert this to a customer you would simply click on one sale and then hit save and that'll automatically save this lead but it'll also convert them to a customer and you can do that on the opposite side once they're already saved so here i'll just leave it as a hot lead i'll click save it's going to save my lead so now my lead is saved great i can from there i could create an estimate or i could click save and book and that will automatically convert them to a customer and take me to book an appointment for them um, but in this case uh, let's just say okay we spoke to them but then maybe they didn't close right away so we the system is going to automatically follow up with them trying to close the deal but then maybe i also call and i try and close them by phone so i could say you know called and left a voicemail for example and so this is where you can put in notes and so it's going to be time stamped and it's going to say called and left a voicemail and who did it so if it was me if it was one of our staff members so on and so forth you can keep track of that and that's in the journal right it's important so you have your journal that keeps track of all your sales notes as you massage this lead and try and convert them to a customer. Now, once you convert them to a customer, that's where, uh, you know, I close the deal. I can go and uh, let's say I lost the deal. Let's start there. I lost the sale. So I can click lost sale and click save. Now where that is going to play a role, I'll go to our dashboard here. And if I scroll down where we have the interest summary that's the interests that i put in so where i put this initial service interest ceramic coating that's going to play into this chart here and tell us where our leads are coming from and then it's also going to impact the sources so in this case remember we chose live chat that's going to impact this chart but then whether i won or lost the lead that's going to show up in your prospect statistics so if i won the lead it's going to count how many leads we got this last 30 days this quarter this year so on and so forth and then if i won the lead or if i lost the sale right so it's going to keep track of all of that as well and that all has to do with your lead status now from your leads page i'll just do this in a new window real quick you can filter by hot leads, warm leads, cold leads, as well as the ones that you won and the ones that you lost, right? So that's where those uh, statuses really come into play. Now, if I lost them, I could click lost sale and I'll have lost it. If I won, I can click one sale and that's gonna automatically create a customer as well. So I won, 
and it's going to tell me you know congratulations on winning the sale and then from there I can click here which is going to be view client because right now I'm still editing the lead right so I can click view client and that's going to take me to their client profile and it's got all their information you know here's their their s class it's got all that ported over and I can click on new appointment invoice estimates so on and so forth now if let's say you are talking to a lead and you haven't put them in the system but they they're like no book me in they're they're down they're whatever the price was it makes sense for them you can skip the leads uh you know feature in that case and you could just create a client and so that would be under i'll do this in a new window so we don't lose our other one so view clients i could simply click add client that's where i can put in their information put it all in and hit save this is going to automatically create a lead at the same time because technically it was a lead, but you won them and they became a client. So you can skip that page of creating a lead and just jump right into creating a client if they're ready to book because they are, they are a lead, they're a prospect. They haven't done business with you yet, but you're saving them as a client because they're ready to do business. So some, some businesses, all they do is use clients and it automatically creates leads for them. Us, we want a little more detailed information at our shop, so we put in leads first because not everyone converts to a customer. That way we can keep track of how many you know, people we're speaking to in a year versus how many we're closing as deals, right? So you have both options available and it's flexible. It depends on how you want to use the system, right? So at our shop, we put in leads, then we convert them to a customer like I showed you. The other option is just jump right into creating a client. That's fine. Uh, both options work well and then you can do both simultaneously as well. So then from here, once you have a client, you're either on the client profile or you have to search for a client. So if I go to view clients and then I can search and I'll just type in test and we're going to see a bunch of tests because this is our, our test account. So here's the one that we, we created test lead. So I can click on that client and then now I'm acting as this particular client and I can choose different options. So I can create an appointment or an invoice or an estimate. It depends on how you run your business and how you're dealing with that sale. Some sales, maybe it's a bigger job. Like this guy wants, you know, let's say he wants to spend $5,000 or something. We might put in an estimate, send it over to him, get his feedback back and forth. And so that would be, I'll click that button here, create estimate. It pre-fills in, selects our customer. We give it a title. Then we go down, we can add the products and services. So let's say he's in for tinting. So we do tinting and it you know we build out our estimate and then we can save this estimate send that over to the customer right that's if you're creating an estimate the other option though is you can just jump right into an invoice maybe he's ready to book but you require a deposit first so you can create an invoice and have that sent over to the customer or if it's like our shop for example we just jump right into appointments so we book an appointment and then when they come for their appointment that's when we then make an invoice and we we have them pay for it so in this case we would just create an appointment i'm just going to open this in a new window so we don't lose the screen here um, so we click on appointment it's going to open this up to make a new appointment pre-select the customer it's got their car here and this is where you fill in all the details you need so you would choose the event date let's say they're coming in on the 19th and they're coming at 11 a.m so we'll say 11 a.m. And let's say this job is going to be five hours. Uh, it's going to be at our shop. So we don't have to do the mobile service. It's at our shop. Um, and then we want to enable feedback because we want to get the Google reviews. And then here, that's where you give it a name. So we can say, you know, uh, full tint SUV. Oh, no, this one's a car. So a sedan. Forgot. Um, and then we can put the notes. Uh, customer getting 5% window tint all around. Um, plus a detail inside so something like that right and then we can put in whatever let's just say 890 dollars whatever we put in and this is where then we can select tinting and then we can also select they're there for detailing as well and then we're going to assign this to you know we'll set it to aaron and then boom so that's done so now we can simply save this and it's going to automatically book that appointment so here i'll click save and it's booking for the 19th so great we have it booked for the 19th so now if we click on our calendar you'll see We've got that event booked for the 19th and so we can click and see the details we see the test lead we created we see the the main service is therefore is tinting and then the extra service is detailing and the duration five hours it has all the details that we put in and then we can take different actions from here like let's say we do the job we're ready to complete the job that's where we can mark the job complete so we'll click this marks it complete and then it's going to automatically calculate what we used for that job based on what we have in the system for our, our inventory if you haven't set up the ai inventory then it won't do this section for you that's a whole nother video though for now we're just focusing on the workflow for creating customers and so on and so forth 
from there now we marked it complete so it shows the check mark here great job's done now we can click on invoice click on invoice it populates our customer fills out the details and then this is where we can put in you know they came for uh, we'll just say full tint boom 180 and then we can add whatever other stuff so they got engine oops engine detailing and then maybe they got something else. They, they came for full detailing as well. So we put that in and then we've, we can put in their VIN number and it's gonna pre-fill out the Carfax based on what service they got. Uh, but we can also add and remove things there as well. But this is where we would create the invoice. And so in this case, we'll just choose save. So we're gonna save this invoice. Done, the invoice is saved. And now there's a few options depending on how they're gonna pay. So if they're gonna pay online, we can do that and it'll process through Stripe, for example or if we're gonna enter a manual payment. So I'll open this one in a new window just to show you. So we click on manual payment and let's say they give us cash. So great, um, paid with cash on the spot. Whatever, you put some notes, whatever you want. Maybe you have to put the denominations of the bills you got, I don't know. Then you click save, that's gonna mark that payment and the invoice will now be paid. Customer gets a receipt, automatically sent to their email. Um, the other option, of course, is if they're going to pay online with credit card, for example, we can click that and then we can put in their card information and basically process that payment. Now, the other option, of course, is let's say they're going to do um, you have a terminal, you have a Stripe terminal. So we can click to view invoice and then we can click Stripe terminal. And this is going to now look for our readers. Uh, we don't have a terminal set up on this account, so it's not going to find any. But if you do, it'll show the terminal. It's going to pass the amount to the terminal. You can process the payment, and then it'll send you back to the invoice, and it's it'll mark it as paid. So that's essentially it. You have a few different ways to, to mark payments. And you can also access the terminal if I go to invoices. And you'll see under here payments. So you can always come back at any time. Maybe some, some places they make the invoices for the whole day for all their jobs ahead of time. So you can just come to your invoices page and you'll see these two buttons here to do an individual payment. Or if you're paying multiple at the same time, you can uh, check off different options. All these ones have been paid, but here, these ones haven't. So we could check off multiple and then we could do pay online or pay offline uh, to mark those. Let me unselect these. Uh, but in this case, uh, from here, we can do the online payment where we manually enter in the credit card or we can click here and it'll connect to the device as well and it'll look for the terminal. Uh, so there's a few different ways. So that's how you would basically do a customer plus the invoice, plus the appointment, plus the payment uh, start to finish. Uh, but like I said, you can do this any which way you want. Um, so we created an appointment first, but maybe in this case, um, let me just do, I think it was lead test or test lead. I can't remember what the customer's name was, test lead. Okay, so here we found our client. So I'll click that. So from here, instead of doing an appointment first, I could just jump straight to an invoice. So I could go create the invoice, send that over to the customer, have them pay the deposit if I want. And then when they come in, I can go to view the customer and from there, I could create their appointment and so on and so forth. So it's it's really up to you how you wanna do the workflow, which is pretty cool. It doesn't force you down any path. It's very flexible. It allows you to put information in any way that makes sense for your business and the transaction that you're working on at that time. So that's it in a nutshell.